Today we're going to build this router table. Uh, all you need is one board from your local box store, a little bit of melamine, and some scrap plywood to make it possible. It holds a small trim router. I've got a DeWalt here, but you can make it fit whatever router you have access to. And then it's great for edge profiles, grooves, plows, any small projects you've got going on. Uh, it's great for beginners, and you can store it pretty much anywhere in your shop. Let's get started. After the end cap and stretcher pieces are all milled and cut to size, I'm gonna start laying out for the screws to attach the base together. So I just stack the parts on top of one another, making sure that the stretchers are flush with the top and bottom of the end caps. And I'll just use a pencil to mark where those end caps fall on the stretchers so that I can take this apart and drill countersinks and clearance holes to attach. I'll use a square just to find the center of each of those sections and lay out for two screws in each stretcher piece. This will reduce the likelihood of the whole table racking as you're using it. And then I'll use a clearance hole and countersink drill bit in a handheld drill and just drill those holes out in each of the stretcher pieces. While I have the stretcher pieces out, I also lay out for the counter bore and clearance holes that I will use to attach the tabletop once the base is all assembled. So I'll put four screws from underneath through the top stretchers into the tabletop to hold it nice and secure. The layout isn't hypercritical. Uh, I just wanna make sure that there's enough screws to hold it nice and snug. So I'll use a Forstner bit to drill the counter bores and flag that bit so that I do not drill so far that the screws pop through the tabletop when I assemble the whole thing together. I'll stack the pieces again and use that same drill bit or an awl to mark where I wanna drill pilot holes into the end caps so that when I attach it with screws, it pulls in nice and straight. You will notice that I have labeled the stretchers and the end caps with letters, and that is just in case I didn't drill the holes perfectly, my pilot holes will match up with my clearance holes and everything corresponds nicely, um, knowing that they're labeled the same. And then I'll just drive the screws home, making sure that each of the stretchers is flush with the top and the bottom of the end cap so that the tabletop sits nice and flat on the top surface and the bottom sits nice and flat on your workbench as you're using it. So I'll drive the screws almost all the way home, make any little adjustments I need to make sure everything is nice and flush and then drive the screws the rest of the way home. And the base is pretty much done. So we'll move on to the tabletop with three quarter inch melamine. And I'll use the router base itself to mark where I'm going to drill the counter bore and clearance holes to attach the router base. So that way I know the holes will be right where I need them to be. The counter bores are going to be on the top surface of the router table since we're attaching the base from underneath. So I only make the hole as deep as it needs to be to put the screw head below the surface. I don't like making them too deep because then they just collect dust and little pieces of wood as you're actually using the router table. And then using the center point of those counter bores, I will use that to register the clearance hole and drill all the way through the table surface. Now I wanna to tend to the disc inserts that I use um, to correspond to the router bits that I'm using at any given point. I know a fly cutter in a drill press is not everyone's favorite, so there are many ways that you can do this. You can use a hole saw, uh, you can lay it out and then cut it at the band saw and then shape it to fit. However you are comfortable making these circles, I usually make four or five of them uh, with different sized clearance holes through the middle to accept different router bit sizes. And to cut those clearance holes for the router bits, I will hold these little discs in a wood hand screw clamp so that my fingers aren't close to the drill bit. 
and use a variety of different diameter Forstner bits to drill through the inserts so that I can fit all sorts of router bits with as little clearance around the router bit itself as possible. Now, before I go drilling into my router table's actual tabletop, I'll use some of the scrap melamine of the same thickness to test the depth of the hole I'm going to drill to accept those inserts. So I need the depth to be precise so that the insert sits flush with the table surface and doesn't impede your ability to run your workpiece over the router itself. Be finicky about this uh, until you dial it in just right, because once you drill into your actual router tabletop, you've committed. Once I'm happy with the depth, I will drill into the tabletop. Be careful not to pull too hard on the drill press handle, because it can go a touch too deep. I do know that from experience. And once you have that relief cut, then you will drill all the way through the tabletop, the same diameter as your biggest router bit. And I know that's subjective. Uh, when I'm using a trim router or a palm router, I don't use enormous bits. So the Forstner bit size I chose for this hole is just as big as my largest roundover. And this hole will go all the way through the tabletop. Next, I'm gonna start preparing for the fence. So I'm going to attach the fence of this router table with the micro jig match fit accessories. And those require a dovetail slot. So first I used a quarter inch straight cutting router bit in my plunge router with a straight cutting guide. And I just cut a slot about four or five inches long from the back edge of the router table. And then I swap that bit out for the corresponding dovetail bit to fit those match fit accessories. Make sure that when you finish the dovetail slot, you turn the router off and let the bit come to a stop. Do not let the router pull up at the end of that cut or you'll be left with a big giant hole. And then I will do the same to the opposite edge. And before I attach the tabletop, I'll throw a big round over around all the edges, top and bottom. And that is to avoid any of those nasty melamine splinters or cuts on your hands later. And then I'll center the base onto the tabletop and attach with screws. I'll remove the plate on the bottom of my trim router and use those same screws to attach the router base to the tabletop. So dropping those little screws through my counter bores and removing the base plate, I can attach the screws from the top with the router base on the bottom. And then I can slip the motor into the base and lock it into place and slide the power cord out the back so it's out of the way. Now we're going to tend to the fence. I laminate two three quarter inch pieces of plywood together and then use the router table that I just made with a pattern copying bit and establish a straight edge along the bottom of the fence. After the two sides are ripped parallel, I'm gonna cross cut three sections out of this length. The two longer sections that I cross cut out of this lamination will serve as the front sections of the fence and the smaller section will serve as the back section of the fence that will also accept your dust collection hose. Make sure you never cross cut against the fence. Using a Forstner bit, I will drill a hole through that small section that is the same diameter as the hose of my shop vac. And then I will carefully attach that small piece overlapping the two front pieces. I prepare these cleats to accept the micro jig match fit dovetail accessories.
And then I will slide the whole thing into place, making sure the whole fence and cleats are nice and flat against the surface, attaching the knobs, and then checking the fence for square. And then we're going to give it a go. So putting a profile bit in there. Works like a dream. And just like that, we finished our one day router table project. Perfect for any affordable trim router, um, good for small routing projects. And all you need is one board from your local box store. Mm -hmm.